hello guys welcome back to my channel in today's tutorial we'll be recreating this beautiful gown with side ruffles using an african print if this is something that you're interested in then keep watching this tutorial is going to be in two sections we'll be drafting the pattern of this dress in this section and the next will be the sewing part these are the materials we'll be working with. I have here some cotton lining. I have an invisible zipper measuring 30 inches. I have this beautiful and colorful wax print or Ankara. I have here also the basic bodies block and the skirt block, which I've drafted using my client's measurements. My client is a blend of two sizes. She's an M on the bodies and an XL on the skirt so we'll be combining these two sizes to make this dress for anyone who do not know how to draft the basic bodies block I have a tutorial on my channel on how to draft the basic block for different sizes from an extra small size to a large size the tutorial for the extra small um, extra large size is coming up soon I also have a tutorial on how to draft the basic skirt block I'll leave the links to these videos in the description we are going to start by contouring these bodies to remove any excess and prevent gaping. But before we do that, I'll quickly mark her underboss level. With my compass on the boss point, you can use your tape if you do not have a compass. I'm going to go in a circle with the boss radius of my client. Your boss radius is the distance from your boss point to your underboss level. To prevent any gaping on the neckline, I'm going to eyeball the midpoint on that neckline and draw a line from my bust point to that point and I'll do the same on the armhole. And on the guideline of the neckline, I will go towards the center front by half an inch and on the armhole, I will come in by 0.25 inch. Please note that these points are marked on the circle of the bust radius. I'll connect these points from the bust point to the armhole, then from the bust point to the circle and to the neckline. I'll slash open the waist that, the guideline on the neckline and on the armhole as well. I'll close in the contour point, making sure both ends of the circle meet and I'll tape it down. I will also do the same on the armhole. Before we continue guys, I'd like to show you how to balance up the side seams of your front and back bodies in case the front bodies is longer than the back, like in the case of my client. The side seam of the back bodies of my client measured 9 inches, while on the front it measured 11 inches, including the 1 inch standard dart. So when I close this dart, I'm going to have 10 inches. So the extra 1 inch, we are going to take it in on the bust dart. Instead of the 1 inch standard bust dart, we are going to do 2 inches to balance up the side seams of the front and back bodies. Our bodies has been contoured and all corrections made. I have traced out these bodies on a fresh paper and we'll move on to drafting the style for the upper part of this dress. According to our picture, the neckline of our model is a boat neckline. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. And the width of these sleeves should be between 1 inch or 1.25 inches. So for the neck depth, I'll be using 3.5 inches. And for the neck width, I'll use 4 inches. And I'll draw in our neck curve. For the width of the sleeves, I used 1 inch and to get the right curve around the armhole and to know how much to come down, I went in and redrew the bust radius to serve as a guide. From the picture, you can see the height of the back armhole and how it is shaped and for this, I will be using 0.75 inch, I will square out that point. So you go ahead and mark the height of your armhole, how low or high you want yours to be. For the armhole shaping, I came down first at 6 inches, then I placed 5 inches, half of the width of how wide she wants the front panel to be, 
and I'm going to ahead to connect this point starting from the one inch sleeve width all the way down. At this point, I wasn't satisfied with the shape, so I came down at six and a half inches. Initially, it was at six inches, making sure not to expose much. I went in with my French curve to slightly curve in that area and freehand style the rest. On this side where it starts curving towards the armhole, I have 5.25 inches and on the ampit to ampit side, I have 5 inches. This is what it looks like on my client. With this, you have an idea on how to go about yours. She didn't want too much showing, so if you want yours more revealing, with this, you have an idea on how much to go down, go out, etc. I'll go ahead and draw in the princess that half inch away from the point where it curves into the armhole. I'll place my underboss circumference. I'll measure what I have here first and here I have 10.25 inches. I'll minus it from one quarter of my underboss circumference. The difference I will divide it into two and mark on both sides of the dart legs and connect the dots. At this point, I made a little mistake which I will show you shortly but before then, we'll go ahead and work on the back panel. For the back neck width, I measured from the shoulder point on the front bodies to the neck curve and this gave me 2.5 inches. I placed this on the shoulder point of my back bodies to mark my back neck width followed by 1 inch the width of my sleeve. From the armhole level, I came down by 0.75 inch just like we did on the front bodies. I will square that out. I went ahead to place half of my back ampit to ampit measurement of 6 inches. For the back neck depth, my body is already at 1 inch standard back neck depth. I'm going to take that down to 1.5 inches. Draw in my back neck curve and the armhole curve as well. So this is what the back armhole curve looks like on my client as well. With this, you have an idea on how to go about yours. To ensure there is a uniform curve from the armhole of the front bodies to the back, I have retraced the armhole of the back bodies on this other side of the paper to enable me align it side by side to the front bodies. And as you can see, there is a uniform curve from the armhole of the front to the back bodies. So guys, you remember the mistake I said I made when I was drawing in the dark legs? If you notice, I drew directly from the boss point and here you can see I've corrected that. I came down by half an inch and redrew my dark legs. If you're on the busty side, you can come down by 1 inch or 0.75 inch as the case may be. And you can see that I've cancelled out the old dark leg. I'll go ahead and add seam allowance and cut out this pattern for the upper part of the dress. So guys, I've cut out our pattern and I noticed that I included the dots while I was tracing out the contoured bodies on a fresh paper. The bust span I'm working with is 8 inches and half of that is 4 inches and you can see that it's still at 4 inches, meaning that I included the half inch dart leg. So here is our contoured bodies. I will go ahead and place it on our pattern and you can see clearly that I included the half inch that leg on both sides actually. I will place the other side of the bodies for you guys to see as well and you can see clearly that the half inch that leg was also included. So I will quickly correct this before we continue. So guys, the correction has been made and you can see here I have 9 inches, 1 quarter of the waist circumference of my client. So we'll move on to the lower part of the dress which is the skirt. 
I have my sketch block already drafted with my client's measurement. Like I earlier mentioned, I'll leave the link on how to draft a simple sketch block in the description. Due to how small the waistline of my client is, I added an extra 1 inch to the seam allowance on the waistline to balance off the difference between the waistline to the hip. You can see where the waistline stops on this skirt. If I'm to connect the hip line to this waistline, this skirt block is going to be one kind, one kind. So to be on the safe side, I added an extra 1 inch to the seam allowance on the waistline to enable me shape in the side seam of this gown correctly. The seam allowance on the hip line down to the hem of the skirt is 0.75 inch, while on the waist is 1.75 inches. It's better to have excess than to be short of fabric. The length of the skirt is 22 inches, sorry that part didn't show, and the seam allowance at the hem is 2 inches. I'll go ahead and cut out the front pattern of this skirt before we move on to modifying the pattern for the back panel. On how I modified the pattern for the back panel, I already have the tutorial on my channel on how to do both allocation and both contour. That video is a clip from this tutorial, so I'll leave the link in the description. So guys, this brings us to the end of this tutorial. The next will be the sewing part and the ruffles will be cut after the dress has been sewn. If you have any questions, do ask in the comments and do not forget to like and share this video. Leave all your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section and I'll see you all in my next one. A bientôt!